to Talking Technique number 13. This is Ariana Cap, and today we're going to be talking tapping. A lot of folks have asked me about this. I play in a duo. It's called Un, and it is just me and a bassoon player, Paul Hansen on the electric bassoon and me on bass. It's a scenario where I get to play chords, I get to play melodies and grooves, sometimes even at the same time. So it is a great uh, place to stretch out as a bass player. Now the whole thing comes with a warning. You need to use tapping with taste. If you are in an advanced situation with a guitar player, piano player, other people playing chords, other people playing melodies, or rhythmic considerations, um, you have to be very careful. To fit the song, make sure to fulfill your function, not get in the way and be tasteful. Uh, that said, tapping is great for all sorts of spots to fill in and do little, little things that build a lot of drama and can be very fun. So a lot of folks have asked me about it. So here we go. Here's a little bit of uh, tapping technique. So you'll notice I brought my sixth string today and I also have the fourth string to show you some things later. But um, the reason why I use the sixth string in this band context is because the layout of the strings gives me access to notes that I would otherwise not have access to. Keep in mind, the sixth string only has 10 more notes than the fourth string. I have five higher notes and five lower notes, so only five more notes than the five string. But the layout of the um, sixth string gives me the opportunity to go in this direction if I need higher notes rather than having to jump. So if I want a, a chord, like for example, an A minor 7, 11, if I wanted to hit that, um, I would not be able to hit that because the F, same note, right, is so far away. I could probably do it. Yeah, I could do this. That is so funny. <laughs> so um, that just to say why I use my six string. Here are a few things you can do to start, start yourself out with tapping. In your right hand, out of the many ways you can do it, but here's one. You take your index finger and you back it up with your middle finger. That gives you a little bit more oomph. And the art in tapping is you want to have an impulsive, but at the same time relaxed motion when you hit the string. So the basic idea is you're just hitting the string. There's your tone, right? Tone production only with one hand. And a good way to practice that is to just play major scale. Okay? And you can tap it as I just did, but it's a bit of a lost opportunity because when you tap, you actually get two for the price of one, <laughs> and that is two notes out of um, a tap and one tapping motion. So, and you can do that by letting go at the same time. So you're doing a tap and you're pulling it off. gives you two notes now your left hand's doing nothing right at this time so i'm going to again uh tap with my right hand but this time not into the open g string but into the d which i'm holding here so now i can't keep going but i'm just going to go up now that gives me a different note right different sound now i'm going to combine the two and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to tap with my right hand into the open string and then hit with my left. So I get three notes, one, two, three, one, two, three. And see that you can get yourself really nice and comfortable. Now you're noticing with my left hand, I'm not doing this claw motion. That's why I never really got used to that. But it is somehow also the angle. If you come from above, you want to have a little more oomph. This motion, where you, uh, the hand's used to grabbing this way. So it seems like there's, there's, um, it's fairly comfortable doing it that way. But, and of course, a lot of times you're going to be tapping without this second finger on top of it. But for now, that's what we're doing. So we're going from the open string, from hit, hit a note, open, and then hit the D. D is great because it's the fifth of the scales, it's going to sound great. And now, you can start speeding this up, and it's actually fairly accessible because it's a, you know, you're, you're having, um, it's a very flowing motion, and you're having two hands, so you can get pretty good tempo. Okay, so um, that's one idea. And then, of course, you can start, move the top, you can also move the bottom. Right, you can move either 
位。And then, of course, you can move both at the same time too. Okay, things like that. So maybe that's a good starter spot to get you started. Cool things to do that are very accessible are, for example, if you're playing a blues, you hit that last note, and because again, you have to use the stuff with taste. Okay, but cool things to do is when you are, when you got a blues, hit the, the root. There, you hit the tritone, for example, at an ending. Or you are doing a solo and you get to a peak, and then you do something like, you know, something like that to sort of build it up. You can sneak those things into a band situation, absolutely. And there's a lot of creative stuff you can do with tapping. So, just again, the little learning to do it with taste. Today's tip: when you are tapping, use a frat rat. What are these things? They are made by Groove Gear, and uh, you, so a lot of folks just use a scrunchie. You can do that as well. I like these better. They don't have any metal parts. They won't damage my bass, and I can easily remove them with this little Velcro if I, when I change my strings. They easily pull on and off, and what they do is they mute your strings when you are tapping. Now, the tapping I just showed you incorporates open strings, so you're not going to Want to use fret reps for that because if I have the fret right here, I'm gonna have trouble making this sound good. So that's why I constantly move them, remove them, remove them, remove them, um, put them on, put them off. There are situations where they come in really handy. So here's, for example, a groove that does not utilize open strings and. <laughs> much going on in my hands it's really hard for me to mute it with my fingers and you get this ring going so if I put my foot up on then all of a sudden it sounds really nice and clean so when you're tapping that's where you want to have these things I was talking technique number 13. Thank you very much for watching a little bit tapping into tapping. Let me know how it's going and any questions. If you want more of that, please feel free to ask for it. All right. Thanks. Cheers.